TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Defense Minister Yav Gallant pledges to cut Iran's proxies as it continues to proactively manage multiple fronts against Israel. Israeli War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz tells Israel's northern residents that Hezbollah will be dealt with, either diplomatically or militarily, before the next school year. The G7 declares support for Israel versus Iran, while in parallel urges for de-escalation. Israel will cut the malign tentacles, spurting venomous ink throughout the region, while tentatively Jerusalem is proactively forging a coalition to confront the octopus directly, that is, the Islamic Republic of Iran. Israeli Defense Minister Yav Gallant toured the Binyamin Regional Council, which is situated in the West Bank district of Samaria, where in recent days an Israeli farmer was brutally murdered in what security officials believe to have been a nationalistically motivated attack. I toured the area near the Malachi Shalom farm and visited the site where the late Benjamin Ahimeir was murdered a few days ago. We will apprehend the murderers and bring them to justice. While the war versus Hamas rages on in the Gaza Strip, Israel's defense establishment, including the IDF, ISA and border police, operate jointly in the West Bank districts of Judea, Samaria and the Jordan Valley to uproot any terror elements seeking to aggravate the security situation throughout the territories. As part of Israel's operational activities in Judea and Samaria since October 7th to date, over 3,600 suspected terror operatives have been successfully apprehended, of who 1,600 are members of the Islamist Hamas. While Israel's defense establishment has been, broadly speaking, successful in keeping Judea and Samaria relatively quiet, there has been an apparent uptick in Iranian efforts to turn the so-called West Bank into yet another front versus Israel. Even here in Judea and Samaria, Iran's tentacles attempt to incite terrorism, transferring weapons, explosives, terror cells, and funds, and directing attacks in order to harm the citizens of Israel. It starts in Tehran, reaches Beirut, Damascus, here in Judea and Samaria, and Gaza, Iran's bloodstained fingerprints are everywhere. We will cut these brutal tentacles off wherever they are situated. We will defend the citizens of Israel, repel the enemy, and strike at whatever is deemed necessary everywhere. Nothing will thwart us from ensuring the safety of Israeli citizens. As the Islamic Republic of Iran effectively wages a multi-front war versus Israel since October 8th, it's seemingly miscalculated in relation to the capacity of the Israeli public and institutions to withstand a prolonged campaign. Israeli War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz, in an address to attendees of the Israel Hayom Daily Annual Conference, voiced praise for Israel's resilience. From a holistic strategic perspective, irrespective of all challenges, difficulties and pains, the state of Israel demonstrated these past six months great power. A small nation, surrounded by enemies, that persevered the worst calamity in its history, stands firm in the face of a multi-sector attack. And yet, all this power will not be enough unless we plan for tomorrow. Minister Gans, who formerly served as both Defense Minister and IDF Chief of General Staff, laid out his vision for what the Gaza Strip should look like in the period ahead and the so-called day after. The day after in Gaza must be one in which Hamas does not control the Strip, in which Israel maintains and implements its operational freedom in the face of emerging threats and completing a process of demilitarization of Gaza. 
Because ultimately, if we do not deal with terror and the demilitarization of the Gaza Strip, no one else won't do it. The civilian administration needs to be realized by a Palestinian actors, which isn't part of Hamas, with the support of an international administration and with the involvement of moderate Arab nations. Minister Gantz went on to emphasize that there are no shortcuts in the period ahead. Friends, there are no shortcuts. This is a difficult campaign, long and essential. The fighting is conducted in an excellent manner by IDF warriors and their commanders. It is crucially important and it is a first and vital condition. However, it is not fully sufficient. Alongside active efforts to deal with the Gaza Strip, Gans also stressed the need to establish, based on already existing mechanism, a paradigm shift for the greater Middle East. To safeguard the tomorrow, we must conduct a regional paradigm shift and a political process must be pursued. We must pursue normalization with Saudi Arabia to strengthen the alliance of the moderate nations in the region in a manner that will also influence the civil administration in the Gaza Strip, but first and foremost, and no less important, to create a united front in the face of the radical axis whose actions we witnessed this past weekend in abundance. The Israeli War Cabinet Minister went on to underscore that while the military's role is crucial, Israel cannot rely on its military might alone. We must continue to persist aggressively in the Gaza Strip for the purpose of returning the hostages and remove the threat from the south. But it is no less important to look at long-term solutions, even if it is a process that will include many years. It is no less important, and maybe even more than any operational move. Because any operational maneuver executed must lead somewhere. It cannot get bogged down on the sword while not diminishing its importance. Amid continued cross-border fire by Iran's Lebanese proxy Hezbollah, which launched an unprovoked war on Israel on October 8th, forcing over 61,000 Israeli civilians to become refugees in their own country, Minister Gantz emphasized that Jerusalem has prioritized the Northern Front and will deal with Hezbollah, either militarily or diplomatically, before September of this year. The day after in Northern Israel must include a Hezbollah that has been pushed from our borders and that Israel maintains its operational freedom in the face of any direct or immediate threat. We must complete this task before the start of the next school year in the North. This challenge, the northern sector, is the second most urgent challenges that must be dealt with after the return of the hostages. With regard to the direct aggression by the Islamic Republic of Iran on Israel, Minister Gunn stressed that an international coalition is in the process of forming to face the Iranian threat. The world must understand that Iran is the source of aggression in the region. It is a global and regional problem. It isn't just a threat to Israel. Therefore, the world must act against it in terms of security and slap it with sanctions for the purpose of ceasing its aggression. I spoke about this with officials in the American administration in particular and officials globally. In recent days, I am convinced that Israel will act together with them to advance this matter. Minister Gantz met yesterday with the foreign ministers of Britain and Germany, after which the latter top diplomat, before traveling to Italy for a G7 foreign ministerial, emphasized Berlin's support for Jerusalem. It also stressed the need to refrain from escalating tensions. The region must not step by step slide into a situation with a totally unpredictable outcome. Everyone must now act prudently and responsibly. I am not talking about giving in. I am talking about a wise restraint, which is nothing less than strength, because Israel, with its defensive victory, already showed strength last weekend. 
That is precisely why I spoke to my Iranian counterpart again on Sunday to make clear into what a dangerous situation Iran has brought not just this region but the entire world. We will not tolerate that. We stand in full solidarity with Israel. As the European Union, we made clear on Monday that further steps will follow because this is a danger for all of us, this unprecedented move. As you already know, we have addressed sanctions on the European level which will obviously be one of the core topics at the G7 meeting on the island of Capri. Subsequently, during the G7 meeting, Italian Foreign Minister Antonio Tajani echo the sentiments of his German counterpart. First and foremost, we share values. Today we will address the most sensitive issues on the agenda, with the international situation that we know well and with the will to play a role as peacekeepers everywhere, with our strength, with the power of diplomacy. We will certainly discuss the Middle East issue. We are friends of Israel, and we support Israel, but we want de-escalation in that area. We are all supporters of this peace initiative. We will also have to address how to sanction Iran in some way for the attack with hundreds of missiles and drones against Israel. We will also have to deal with the other situation in the Middle East and the maritime traffic through Suez and the Red Sea, an issue that involves all our countries since the merchant traffic is threatened by the Houthis. Prior to the G7 meeting, during a European Council meeting in Brussels, European heads of state united in force to hold the Islamic Republic of Iran accountable for its aggression against Israel. We condemn this attack launched by Iran against uh, Israel. We have decided to put sanctions, to put in place sanctions against uh, Iran. This is uh, a clear signal uh, that we want to, to send. We had a good debate and we feel it's very important to do everything to isolate uh, Iran. The idea is to, to target the companies that are needed for the drones, for, for, for the missiles. This is the global idea and we'll have more information through the decision that will be put in place by the Council. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and for the 133 hostages in Hamas captivity who have remained there for the last 195 days. Moreover, if you're blessed by our productions, which are exclusively donation-based and as such broadcast free of charge, please consider making a donation. You can do so via our website www.tv7israelnews.com I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Mevorach and God willing we'll see you during our next update until then Shalom from Jerusalem <laughs>